In this second video, we will set up a default scene in Blender, go over a few basics about the importer, and finish up by importing some standard, not animated, level set assets that we will use in later videos. When you first load Blender, your default scene will look like this. You got a cube, camera, and a light source. So when I go to start working on something, the first thing I'm going to do would be to delete the cube and the light source. So instead of having to do this every time, I'm going to change it so that the scene is my preferred setup. First, I'll delete the cube. Next, I want to delete the light source. The Torchlight 2 meshes are shadeless and do not need a light source. Even if I was working on a project that did have shaded models, I would want different lighting anyhow. Now I will press 1 on the numeric keypad to get a front view. I always prefer to start from this view. Next, pressing 5 on the numeric keypad will switch into orthographic view. I'm leaving the camera because when working on assets for mods, I often create preview images. I'll cover that in more detail later. But for now, just note that I'm leaving the camera. Now that I'm happy with how things are set up, I will save this scene as my startup scene. To do this, first click File, and then Save Startup File from this menu. It will ask you for confirmation. So go ahead and click that. That's it. To test it, let's add a random mesh to the scene. First click Add, and then Mesh, and then Monkey to add Suzanne's head to the scene. Now let's try resetting the scene. Click File, and then New, and it will ask for confirmation that we want to load a new scene. Go ahead and click it to confirm. And now we are back to our empty beginning scene. Additionally, you will probably want to have the 3D view start in textured mode. By default, the 3D view is in solid mode. While this mode has its uses, all of the models we will be loading are textured and we will primarily be working in that mode. To change the setting, just click the little plain white sphere, change it to this checkered sphere labeled textured. Now go ahead and save your startup file again. Don't forget to confirm it. For this next part, we will be using the Pink Vertex Torchlight 2 importer. Once installed and activated, on the left hand side of your 3D view, you will have a Torchlight 2 tab. Go ahead and click on that. First, there is the Import Mesh button. If we are modifying an existing Torchlight 2 asset, whether that is level sets, props, NPCs, monsters, or players, this is where we will start. If the mesh you are importing is animated, it will load the skeleton into a Blender rig when you import. Next is the Import Animation button. It is currently grayed out because you have to have a rigged mesh, meaning one with a skeleton, loaded before you can import an animation. To see what I mean, if I add Armature Single Bone to my scene, now the Import Animation button is enabled. The same goes for the Export Animation button. Now we are ready to start doing some importing. To begin, we will click the Import Mesh button. Another handy time saver is that once you have selected your Torchlight 2 media folder, is to add it to your bookmarks on the left. This way, you can always quickly get back to the media folder without having to drill down to it. Let's start off easy by importing a floor tile from the catacomb set. You will notice that there's a lot of collision meshes and they are named this very similar to another mesh. The collision is basically 
when your character walks across the screen or an NPC walks across the screen, it tells them where they can and cannot walk. So we'll need to be editing those a lot for these level set pieces as well. We're going to start with the catacomb floor blank 01 mesh. Come up to the top and click Import Torchlight 2 Mesh. Okay, it loaded, but that doesn't quite look right, does it? Let's see what's going on. We'll zoom in, do a top view. There's no texture. Why is there no texture? We'll click on the material, texture on the material, texture there. So it turns out that I made a mistake earlier when I was setting up my default scene. If I press the N to bring up this side panel and I look at my shading, it is currently set to multi-texture. The graphics will only show up under GLSL. So really what I want to do is to save my default scene with GLSL enabled for my 3D views. To do this, I'm going to need to delete this asset that I just imported, go back to my front view, and then save my startup scene again. Confirmed. Now I can come back in and re-import that mesh using my bookmarks. See, it was very good that I had that. Come into Level Sets, Catacomb, find that floor tile I want to mess with, and Import Torchlight 2 Mesh. Now it's in my scene, and I can go to the top view and look down. If I want to look around, you know, I can do this. I can see it's got a little raised section on it. Pretty good. Since we're working on a floor piece that needs to have a collision so that the NPCs and player models, you know, step up appropriately or know where to walk and where not to walk, we should go ahead and import the collision file for this as well. If I select the collision file, you can see that it is not textured at all. However, it does have a special material on it. I haven't fully dived into all the different materials, but I believe that this, by having it named the collision stone, that that tells it's not only, you know, that the player can walk on it, but what sound should be admitted when you're walking on it. So I, I would assume that there is a wood one so that the footsteps sound different when you're walking across the different materials. If we isolate this object, we can see that it's just flat. It does not have that raised section on it like the texture does. That means that when a player character or NPC is walking across here, they will just clip through this raised section as if it's not even there. So you might see their foot stuck inside of it. This is a good stopping place. We went over setting up our default scene, talked about some of the buttons on the importer, and finally imported a mesh. If you are not starting the next tutorial immediately, you should save your work. In the next tutorial, we will make modifications to the mesh as we have imported. For now, take a quick break, stand up, stretch, move around a bit, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.